Hi, this is Edwin Abrahamian from Saratech, and welcome to our Tips and Tricks tutorial series. Today, we'll be talking about Fiberson in NX 1953. In particular, we'll be diving into the offset curve feature within Fiberson, and then we'll be taking a look at how to create a wrapped ply. Once that wrapped ply is created, we will go ahead and run the producibility for that ply, and then we'll go ahead and create the flat pattern. First thing I want to point out here is the model tree. You'll notice that layers are being used to organize and show and hide certain features. In addition to that, it's uh, the naming is deliberate. So I want to keep it that I know what my rosette point is, what my zero direction is, my net boundaries are. I've also utilized um, the colors, so highlighting certain curves um, so I can easily tell what's my net boundary, what's my extended boundary. So let's dive into FiberSim. I'll point out the following. So we have a laminate already created of our tool surface. We also have a rosette already created as well. So if you take a look at the laminate, we can double click to edit. We've named it wrapped. We've selected our layup surface, which is our surface uh, extracted sur uh, faces here. We also have a net boundary defined. There's actually two curves that define the net, two curves that define the extended. You can select that straight from the tree. The reason for that is because this is a multi-domain surface and uh, ergo we will have a multi-domain ply, uh, which is fine for a wrapped ply. Um, you'll see the reason why we're creating an offset curve is to basically define our start and end curve for our wrapped ply. We've also assigned a default material. So every ply we create will have prepreg PL3K by default for this particular laminate. The rest of these options we actually kept default. For the rosette, we've kept the default name. We had we went ahead and selected the origin from the tree and the zero direction line. You'll see that the right hand rule is in effect here for our zero and then our negative 45, 45, 90, etc. So you can always define your direction manually. We've also uh, associated this particular rosette with a standard mapping. You can go ahead and choose translational, radial, spine-based as well, but in this case, tr uh, standard works fine. And the rest of these uh, for the display, we've kept standard and default. So once our rosette is also defined, we can go into Tools, Curve Creation, Offset, uh, Curve Offset. In this window, we can actually go ahead and right click, create new, and we're going to call this particular curve offset 1.5 inch. We'll define our surface. Uh, the offset type, you can do directional or constant, we'll keep it at constant. The curves to offset, I'm actually going to select an edge here. And then what direction do you want to make this offset? So the direction point in this case, if you select to the left, it'll offset to the left of the curve. Select to the right, it'll offset to the right. So we can go ahead and do a point on face, select the left here to the left of the curve, to then create our curve here. Click OK again to confirm. There's no boundary curves for this instance. We only want a single curve. And the offset value will be 1.5 inches. Our offset is based on distance rather than material thickness. And the corner type, if you have a closed curve, you can uh, be wary of the chamfer or fillets, but in this case, it's just a straight because it's a single curve or line. And click Generate here. Then we can go right-click and do a Create Based On. A lot of the same options remain. We can go ahead and uh, call this 1.25 and just change the value here. So you'll notice that there were actually feature groups created within NX that contain these curves. So you can go and edit these curves within NX itself, uh, but you saw how easy it is to basically utilize FiberSim to just create a simple curve offset. So once that was, once we have those two curves defined, and created. We can then go into our ply, right click and create a new ply. 
Working boundary set to net by default, which is fine. Our parent is a wrapped laminate. Rosette is a rosette we defined. Our orientation in this case will keep it at zero. This is our first ply, so we just have a step of 10 and go in increments of 10. And our net boundary is multi-domain, which is okay for a wrapped ply. We'll go ahead and select wrapped. This is basically showing us or telling us that the simulation method has changed to curvature adaptive. Um, what FiberSim is doing is when running the producibility and getting your results, you're basically, um, FiberSim is running the results closer to the contour of the laminate surface. So uh, reasons why you may not have this checked is if you have a simple uh, tool surface where you don't need as precise results, where again, the producibility really follows the curvature of the, of the surface, um, then you may not want to have that checked on. Um, it does increase your runtime. So just like an FEA, if you have a you know, really um, high density mesh, um, where it can take a while to get your results, similar here. When you're in, when you're in a producibility, get your results, um, if you have curvature adaptive selected in some instances, it may increase that um, runtime. In this case, it is a simple ply on a tool surface, so shouldn't um, have any adverse effects. We can uh, define our start curve here, and then our end curve. And you will see that these two lines are created that basically tell us how the what direction the ply will wrap. So wrap all the way around in this direction and over and basically overlap by a quarter of an inch. You can always reverse that direction as well. So we'll go ahead and click OK here to confirm. We'll run the producibility. We are basically seeing the results for deformation. In this instance, there is no deformation. Um, so these results look good. We can then go ahead and create the flat pattern for this. Once that flat pattern is created, we can actually go ahead and uh, change the layout. So right now it is on top of our tool surface, but you can see that this grid is created by FiberSim to basically lay out the flat patterns. We can manipulate that grid or create a new layout. So the grid size, we'll go ahead and shrink this to 50 by 50. And we'll actually change, we'll actually offset this first one away from our tool surface a little bit. So we'll do a five generate that layout. So you can see we basically moved over, which we, we made our grid smaller and we moved over our flat pattern so we can see a bit better. And this flat pattern is actually a curve or a sketch rather that's created in your tree. So if you go in here, here's a sketch, you can go ahead and manipulate that sketch. So we can go change the color of this and we'll go ahead and make it black. And you can now see the direction, the, the actual flat pattern itself and origin point, and then the zero direction as well. Okay. So that concludes uh, the demonstration on wrapped plies, creating a offset curve within FiberSim. And we also talked about generating the producibility, creating the net flat pattern, and then working with the flat pattern layout tool. Thanks for watching our tips and tricks tutorial series. Again, this was Edwin from Saratech. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.